Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. A very beautiful, happy Saturday morning. It's about 10 a.m. on this February 3rd. Um, if we didn't have to concern ourselves with the bare ground that you're seeing, uh, I'm not a fan of this for many reasons. I touched on it last video. I'm not going to bore you with my two cents this morning. Okay. <laughs> That's what you call juicy bales. I'm not really sure I understand this. I do not intentionally make this high in moisture, dripping wet with juices, baleage. Uh, and I was not in a rush this past year when I made this stuff. I'm not really, <coughs> I, I will say this, you know, this was a hell of a big line here. I am taking off this middle part. So you need to understand uh, gravity. Uh, that's what I'm going to blame this on. But even, even on the higher points of this line, uh, it was extremely high in moisture. And uh, I'm going to have to chalk this up on the old uh, chalkboard and remember this for last year. I... Yeah, I, I don't care for this. Don't get me wrong, it's excellent feed. The cows just eat it right up. Truth be told, it goes through them pretty quick too, if you catch my drift. Um, remember, I'm not an educator. I'm giving you my thoughts and feelings and the way I do things. Follow 1% of what I do. The other thing I don't like about stuff like that, that high in moisture, especially alfalfa, is I like to call it sour guts. Is it harmful? No, I don't believe so, but it, it gives the cows a case of the, what I'm gonna call the sour guts. Um, I got a whole bunch of pregnant mamas at the farm and I don't, I don't think I need to explain that further. So what I've been doing, uh, yeah, it's all juices. <clears throat> this first crop line off this field is what, what you see there. What I didn't show you is uh, a different bale that I have in the spears. <clears throat> I've been classifying this at 60% moisture. That's just me. Truth be told, I am going to buy a moisture tester, tester for this year. Um, this line here which is this field's first crop, is at about 40%. And uh, I gotta clean this shit up. You can be as clean as you want. You're always gonna find some white wrap in the spring. And the cows and heifer lot, they eat all of it, but they just destroy this stuff. Like I said, I classify this as 40%. So what I've been doing is I've been doing in every other load. Just to kind of keep things a little kosher in the cow yard. Not to mention, of course, an offering of dry hay. That's my two cents. All right. Let's have a little chat out here. For many, many years, I've been a part of the channel. This has been one of my higher producing, highest producing alfalfa fields <coughs> I have. Not to mention it's one of my larger acreage fields uh, that comes in at uh, shy of 24. Uh, this will no longer be treated as an alfalfa stand, even though it's packed with alfalfa yet. Um, doesn't take a keen eye to see right here this uh this run of grass Th those runs are all over the place um this is going to be treated as grassland um what i'm trying to say is i'm going to fertilize as such this is going to start getting triple 19. <laughs> the amount of alfalfa in here kind of scares me to think about a dry first crop 
That is my goal though. Of course, if it fails, I've got the wrapper, so that'll be all right. But my intentions are to start treating this as one of my highest producing tonnage pieces of properties um, for dry hay. See what happens. Uh, this stand of alfalfa really, really came forward. Uh, this will, of course, be continue to be treated as a pure stand of alfalfa with all potash this spring, sulfur, and uh, it will be wrapped. the deer got in here there is there are some good points with this abnormal uh, freaky weather we're having January February and that is that of course I'm not experiencing any bale damage they're still out there foraging they're just not uh, doing damage to get it to feed they don't have to they have feed out here So I guess that's one good thing. This is a line of third crop. Not many bales that it came all off of all these two pieces of property, but uh, that's gonna be some damn fine feed. <clears throat> Full barn cleaning this morning, all pens. And of course, it's day number four. So I had to run the barn cleaner. I've already been out here once uh, to spread the manure on a piece of ground that we're gonna talk about. Yeah. Uh, the reason I'm out here now instead of after lunch, because I got I had some other stuff that could have been done this morning, was I'm hitting this while the ground is still frozen. I came out here the other day and boy, I had to get crafty because the ground was loose. I ended up having to park the trailer right here, as you can see, <clears throat> and try and, you know, slide my way in there grabbing bales so I don't do, you know, a bunch of damage to the field. Okay, this is roughly 16 acres. You guys been a part of this for multiple years you know that i've always used to call this the grassy alfalfa field which of course is now going to be that this was this past year's sorghum first crop sorghum's all been fed out that line is gone that's that beautiful second crop sorghum i'm gonna wait till uh uh, th uh, uh three weeks or three and a half weeks before calving season truly starts when that is going to get opened up. Okay, decision's been made on this field and there's no turning back. Reason being, I put the order in on my seed uh, two days ago. <coughs> this truly is going to be a, uh, this is going to be corn silage. Uh, planted into corn with, uh, you know, for silage to go up into the silo. I was supposed to do silage this past year. I opted not to because a lot of the pricings on things, it's not like the pricings have changed. It doesn't matter. I need to keep my silos alive by putting a product in there. I am very excited this year about what we may see here. It's gonna take mother nature's help, obviously. Everything's going to. Good night, Irene. I hope we get it this year too. My goal is for us to see one of the most heavily tonnaged, beautiful crops of corn silage in the UP of Michigan. Getting a little dramatic here. The fertility's there. It's good ground. Uh, it's had almost 10 years of uh, it's had eight years of pure potash for uh, that alfalfa. And then when I classified it my grassy alfalfa field, of course, it's gotten two years of uh, triple 19. 
Last year, there was actually, <laughs> last year got away on me. There was a fair stand of alfalfa regrowth before it got plowed under. So of course, now we're talking green manure, followed up by the fertility to make that nice sorghum stand that I had uh, two cuttings this past year. Uh, that's gonna get a complete full on chisel plowing. And uh, yeah, the appropriate amount of fertilizer. I'll probably broadcast 200 pounds to the acre of triple 19 before a culti mulching, or I'll call it a rolling. And then I'll inline uh, probably 100 pounds to the acre of pure urea because that ground has everything else in it. Looking very forward to that. Looking forward to planting corn again, even if it's a small scale. Uh, pretty excited about it. My hands are getting cold. So let's talk about the economy <laughs> without ruining the Saturday morning because I can't afford to. The economy is definitely showing its face. I had a, uh, a lot of alfalfa, and I still do, that was deemed able to be for sale to the deer feeders, whether you agree with that or not. I got bills to pay. Um, you can definitely see the face of the economy this year. Don't get me wrong, the weather is a big pusher as well. People don't usually like starting to feed their deer until they, they say it's an emergency. You know, 30 below zero, foot or two to snow. Well, we had some of that weather. And even on those weekends, sales have been very piss poor. And uh, I have a feeling, I've, I've got way too much feed right now. If we had to forget about selling anything, I... Uh, I have got a pile of extra feed. That's a great problem to have. Need to understand a lot of it's wrapped alfalfa, all that fourth crop, what was it, about 270 bales at the farm. Um, so I have a feeling uh, this spring, hopefully I can help out, you know, by selling some feed uh, for cattle. And it'll be some uh, dairy quality alfalfa feed. But yeah, tricky year. Don't get me wrong. It's not like I didn't sell any. Uh, but <laughs> two, three years ago, you could have had a full-on Saturday bale sale, like what I usually like to do. Um, I dedicate it for a few hours. You'll get a line of 20, 30, 40 trucks in here coming to get a bale, if not two, if not three or four. Uh-uh, that's not the case. But I guess kind of rightfully so. Condition that we're in, that we're not going to get into. That was probably real stupid of me to stay parked here and let this puddle. Yeah, good job, Ben. That's all right. I'm not concerning myself with the alfalfa anymore. As far as a pure stand, this should be the finest, finest cow chow available uh, this year. And uh, I look real forward to it. I was a little scared of the haircut that I gave both of these properties before a winter weathering set in. But uh, there was like a week there where it ended up flourishing and uh, I have all the confidence in the world we should have one hell of a stellar crop here for this coming year. Very heavily counting on this field here and the crops that it's going to offer uh, for uh, a large percentage of the dry hay needed <clears throat> for the farm. If I can help it, I'd like to take about six, seven, eight, nine hundred small squares off of here as well. Uh, that'll be that'll be during second crop. So that's it. Yeah, you can tell on these bales where you you get into some grass pockets, 
you know which which is fine that's okay that's it folks i had a few extra minutes here thought i'd turn the uh video on and do a little jaw jack in here but uh everything's going okay it's a beautiful saturday it's one of those saturdays where you can get a hell of a lot done if you stop talking into a into a phone <laughs> but uh that's it that's my two cents i'm sticking to it have a great weekend hope you got some nice plans and uh that's it i'm gonna talk to you sooner or later